Good morning. This is Jim Moore, and you're watching Words of Encouragement. And it is August 10th, and this episode number 664. It's going to be really short today, Lord willing. I've got a lot of work to do, and so, um, yeah, it's going to be a short one. I wasn't going to do the program today, but I really felt impressed of the Lord to come on and share just a couple uh, things with you really quickly. Uh, don't check out. This is actually really important this morning. And so, um, yeah, um, so Linda and I were watching uh, TV last night and uh, going through, actually, with YouTube. We were looking at YouTube, and something came on that caught our attention, and we watched, and it was very, very powerful. So I just wanted to share that with you today, and it is about the subject of demon possession. So there are two links that I put in the program today at the bottom I strongly encourage you to watch both of them. Uh, one is by a young man, man named Isaiah Salvador, uh, a person that I'm sure you are familiar with. I have uh, referenced him on a number of times. His picture is there in the Facebook post, uh, the announcement this morning. Uh, fiery young man, don't think he's always right. <laughs> I probably say this way too often, but I don't necessarily agree with everybody all the time. But I think he's, you know, spot on a lot of the times. And this is one of those instances that I believe he is. And so demon possession is something that really I need to take the time to have a long conversation about this. Because the Bible actually says quite a bit about it. And as I have told you before in the past, I had an encounter with the Lord years ago where he spoke to me. And he said, Jim, he came to me and said, Jim, uh, let's see if I can remember how he said it. He said, my people don't deny my word. They simply ignore it into irrelevancy. Now, that was kind of a fancy phrase, and I wasn't sure what he meant. But as I pondered it and asked him about it, the Holy Spirit began to show me, oh, we as believers say we believe the Bible, and we, we really kind of do. I mean, it's not like we're lying. We do believe the Bible. But at the same time, we there are parts of it, for whatever reason, culture, the way we were raised, whatever, parts of it we ignore. So if you're like me, I've done this. I know other people have done this. Start reading the scriptures and uh, just skip over stuff. Well, I get to this part. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I don't whatever my pastor said that's that's no longer done away or that's in a, whatever. Anyway, we just kind of skip over it. So we don't really go into it deep and whatever. So if you've been taught certain things about demon possession, even the the title of this program will keep some people from, from looking at it because of the their paradigm that they have. And so, again, I want to encourage you to watch two links. I'm going to keep this short so you can do that. When you hang up, go to him. The first one is Isaiah Salvador, and he's doing a um, how would they? I don't know how they, what they call this, but they're watching hand. God bless you. <laughs> Excuse me. They're watching a a video from someone else and commenting on it as they go, and so he's watching a video from a man named Robert Morris. Now I read one of Robert's books years ago. Linda and I did called The Blessed Life, and uh, it it changed. It literally changed the way we saw some things about giving. And uh, I won't go into that because it's another story, but it was a fascinating book. And from that point on, we're kind of like, yeah, this guy's he's right on. So Robert Morris, pastor from, I think it's called Gateway Church in Texas. They have a number of campuses in Texas, does this uh, message about his own personal deliverance as a Christian, as a preacher. Now, this is the first part of this that is so difficult for people to understand. I'm going to read something to you out of a book that I reference all the time, which is called The Final Quest. And uh, I don't believe what I'm telling you because I read this book. I really was convinced by the Lord already that this is the way things go. Uh, but I'm going to read it to you in just a second real quick here. But the idea, I think most people, the reason they they either think that a believer can be owned by the devil. In other words, they can call themselves a Christian, have Jesus, uh, literally have, have asked Jesus to come into their heart. The Spirit of the Lord came into them. They were forgiven of their sins. They're walking for God. And the old school teaching is that you cannot be demon possessed if you are a Christian. And I think 
to a degree. And I just want to explain that real quick. That's probably true. And I need you to watch the link because I don't have time to explain it this morning, but he does. And it's super good. And so um, uh, Isaiah agrees with this. And again, don't believe just because they say, I believe it because the Bible says so. And I put down the, the passage there in Mark chapter 16, where Jesus said to his disciples, okay, this was post cross, right? Because I know people say, well, the cross did away with all that. No, because Jesus had already died on the cross, went to the grave, been resurrected, and now was literally ascending, floating off the earth to heaven. And at the, as his last words to them is, you will cast out demons. Okay, well, so the easy thing would be to believe that only means non-believers. Now, I, my opinion on this, and I'm going to read this to you out of here because I think it says it better than I do, is that if you are, if you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, you're not going to be possessed, okay? But you can have a demonic entity, a demon, riding your back, chasing you down. I heard a testimony the other day of a man who who had went to um, to hell and he saw these demons that had been like attached to people their whole life. Now, I do believe that the same way that God sends an angel to you. And again, please forgive me for not going deep and giving all this. I don't have time to do it. I'm not afraid to. I just don't have time to do it. But God gives you a, you've heard of a guardian angel. That's true. I think God sends angelic individuals to follow you your whole life and to help you. Well, the enemy does the same thing. He's not an idiot. Well, he is, but he's not. You know what I'm saying? So you've got things that chase you down. You can have generational things, something that hit your mom and dad, something that affected your uh, your parents. And so they maybe have passed on and the enemy says, well, if it worked for them, it'll work for their kids. I mean, this is just what he does. But the word demonized does not mean to be owned by a demon vis-a-vis -vis possessed, okay? But it does mean that that thing can attach itself to you and doesn't want to let go and you need help, okay? So I say this because I have witnessed this in 40 years of ministry, lots and lots of people who say, you know what, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get free from this thing. And that is evidence that there's a demonic entity that has, is either just like dogging your trail or maybe even has attached to you. Hi, babe. And there's Deborah and there's my, my love. All right. So let me, let me get to this again. I want to say there are two videos. One is Isaiah Salvador. Linda and I watched it last night. So it's, it's Jim Moore and Linda Moore approved. I think my wife approves. <laughs> okay. Really good. And he's, he's watching little bits and pieces of Robert Morris, Pastor Robert Morris's testimony. Now, Robert's pastor of a mega church, which you don't see very often. You don't see super, super big churches. People talking about, why? Demonology. Why? Because it's not popular. It's going to offend people, blah, blah, blah. They will actually say they believe it in a lot of cases, but they won't talk about it. Whatever. Anyway, Robert does. He's unashamed. He's gotten bashed for it. He's gotten mocked and ridiculed, whatever. He's telling the truth. And he gives his own testimony about how being a saved individual and literally a preacher and struggling until he was delivered. So there's that link, Isaiah Salvador talking about Robert Morris. And then I found the link. Well, actually, it's in Isaiah's, uh, if you go to Isaiah's YouTube thing that I put down there, and he's got a number of links that you can go to. But the one that he's interviewing, I've got right underneath that. So I've got Isaiah Salvador and the link. And then I've got right under it, Robert Morris. I would encourage you to watch both because Isaiah Salvador's link is him commenting on Robert's uh, testimony. And he only he kind of cuts it up and only does little bits and pieces. And it's not real long. It's like 20 minutes long. And then the whole version of Robert's message, which I think is important for most Christians to watch, is about twice that long, about 40 minutes, and that link is directly underneath it, okay? So I make myself clear. Two links. I'd encourage you to watch both. Let me read to you, and then I'm going to go from the final quest. Now, Rick starts out in this talking about a dream that he had. So I won't go into all this, but I want to say that I 100% believe this. Now, I'm not saying every single thing in it is perfect, That's how, and it's not the Bible, for sure. But if I had this experience, here's how I see this. If I had this experience, and I've had some pretty dramatic ones, I would believe the experience I had, because I would go, okay, that was the Lord, or no, that was a bean dream, okay? My spirit 
strongly witnesses that this is the truth. Now, I wish I had time to read a lot of it to you. I can't. Okay, what I'm looking at right now, I'll hold it up to you. It's going to be backwards. But this is a book that we got from Morningstar Ministries. It's called, it says, The Final Quest Trilogy. And the reason it is the trilogy is because it's actually three books in one. This vision, this dream, this maybe, you know, third heaven experience that uh, Rick had. He says he's not really sure. It's like Paul, he said, whether I was in the spirit or out of the spirit, I don't know. If I actually went there or didn't go there, I don't know. All I know is it's real. Okay, so the first book, the first, uh, how would you say that? Like, it's like uh, the episodes you watch, you know, when you binge a TV program, you got episode number one, two, three, four, five, whatever. This is the three installments. First of all, it is the final quest. Rick, if you're watching, I'm giving you a free, a free book, <laughs> a free commercial. The final quest and then the call is the second book, book number two, and then number three, the torch and the sword. There is no other book. And I say this unapologetically because of the way God through the Holy Spirit impacted like a hammer my life through this book. There's no other book I would more next to the Bible recommend that you read. I'm just saying that's my personal opinion. It's not doctrine. All right. So he's talking about in the vision what is called the hordes. You know what a horde of people is? It's a massive amount of people. The hordes of hell, H-E-L-L, are marching. It's a last day's vision about the strategy of the enemy. You know, he's got, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of demons. Nobody knows. I don't know. I don't care. Okay. But the hordes of hell are marching. And he describes the way the enemy with his army will be doing his work in the final battle before the Lord returns. Okay. And that's that's the first part of it. But the most of the book is about what the Lord will be doing. If you don't read this book, if you haven't read this book, you should. I'm telling you, it will change your mind. I find it very biblical. There were a couple things when I read it. I'm like, mm, I'm going to have to pray about that. But in the end, I felt like the Lord said, yep, that's right. All right. So I want you, I want to read this just three paragraphs. That's what the Lord told me. Three paragraphs about this issue. Okay, and Isaiah talks about this in the video. Demons, the word, the literal word for demonized in the Bible, possession, demonized. It, it means to be attached, but not to own. Okay, if you're saved, and this is the big struggle. So preachers for years says you cannot be a Christian and have a demon. Making no distinction between whether the demon is on the inside of you and owns you, like the demoniac of Gadaria who was stuffed full of thousands of demons, or whether you got one chasing you, okay? And because of that, it created, in my opinion, a vast amount of shame and unwillingness for the believer to go, hey, I've been struggling with this thing. You know, I need help. I need prayer. I need, I need deliverance, whatever you want to call it, okay? <clears throat> From coming forward about that, because they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be shamed. And, and, he talks about that in the book when these people wind up getting uh, overwhelmed by this demonic entity. They're actually riding on their backs. What do the Christians do? They start jabbing at Now, please don't go, I'll, I hate Christians because Christians always do that. That's not what I'm saying, but, but we do. They're stabbing them with, with, you know, swords and stuff like, you deserve this, you piece of felt. <laughs> okay. We have to stop that. There are many, many, not, we're not even talking about unbelievers yet, who he says... The demon is actually inside of them, okay? Anyway, the bottom line is he came to set the captive free, whether the captive is an unregenerated, unsaved, not born again Satan worshiper, like I personally have dealt with, okay? Literally, for real, that's another story. Or whether it's someone who, through even no fault of their own, something has been following them, maybe mommy and daddy, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, I'm going way deeper than I want to go. All right, but this is important. Please listen to this, and then I'm going to hang up the phone. All right? So he's in this dream, and this is he's seeing these hordes of hell. And as it zooms in, this is what he sees. The most shocking part of this vision was that this horde of demons, led by Satan himself, this vast... Imagine the movies you've seen where you see all these armies, like in the Lord of the Rings and stuff. And he says, this horde of hell was so far out, he couldn't see the end of it led by the accuser of the brother himself. OK, 
Okay, the shocking part of this vision was that this horde was not riding, R-I-D-I-N-G, riding on horses, like you see in the movies, but primarily on, you ready? Christians. Christians. Oh, I don't believe that, Jim. Well, believe whatever you want to believe. I think I think the evidence that we're seeing in the world today is a, that shows a great deal of proof. I think the scriptures declare it. All right. Anyway, they were riding on Christians! Exclamation point. Most of them were well dressed. Now, now understand that Rick is not a you know, or Jesus for that matter. He's not a Christian hater. He's not a he's not a church basher. Just the opposite. Okay. This is not something I don't believe out of the product of his mind. Well, Christians are all a bunch of idiots, you know, and I've been hurt in church so many times and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I really believe the Lord said this is the way it really is, Rick. Okay. All right. Most of them were well-dressed, respectable, and had the appearance of being refined and educated. But there also seemed to be representatives from almost every walk of life. So every genre. Okay. The poor, the rich, the young, the old, so on. While these people professed Christian truths, now this is important, in order to appease their conscience, what am I always saying? We say these things because we know we're supposed to believe them. They would confess Christian truths uh, to appease their conscience, but they lived their lives in agreement with the powers of darkness. You see, that's the problem with sinning. That's the problem with saying, I believe this, but I don't live it is that you're living in agreement with the powers of darkness. That creates open doors, and that allows these demonic things to come. When again, even when we say open doors, that sounds like he's, they're going to come inside and possess you. I personally don't believe that. Let me read on. They lived their lives in agreement with the powers of darkness, and as they agreed with those powers, they're assigned, hear that word? Assigned demons grew, grew and more easily directed their actions. They don't forsake the Lord. How many Christians? I know hundreds, maybe thousands of Christians. They're like, I hate Jesus because, because they are impacted constantly by the enemy to try to do some of these things. Okay, no. But the enemy is uh, directing their actions to the, a certain degree, and they need to be delivered. Many of these believers were host to more than one demon. But one of the demons would clearly be in charge. The nature of the one in charge dictated which division it were marching in. Okay, and before he listed some of these demons, and some of them would shock you. Uh, let me just give real quick this. What I, I need an exhaustive list of demons to know, you know, blah, 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 which ones. No, you don't. Let me just give you a real simple way to understand demonology in this regard. I'll just listen close. Hi, Kathy. Any sin, any thing that is in the realm of the enemy and not in the realm of God, whether it's lying, it could be as simple or as common as, I mean common, I don't mean to diminish, but as common as lying or even bad thoughts, anger, unjust anger, bitterness, depression, then you go to some maybe some bigger things, theft, violence, lust, murder. Okay, so anything. Okay, we tend to always gravitate to the super bad things, right? Oh, that's definitely a demon. Well, of course, it's Hitler. He's murdering people. Yes, of course that is. But if it's something that's not of God that the enemy wants you bound by, that can have, you know, it's not like he's creating him some kind of a demon mill. You know, you got a third of the angels of the billions of angels in heaven that fall from heaven. And he just picks out one and says, I'm, you're going to be a, a, a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. The Bible actually talks about that. Won't go there. You're going to be a spirit of lust. You're going to be a spirit of greed. You're going to be a spirit of bitterness because, and you're going to find people that have been hurt and attach yourself. So you get what I'm saying? Okay. So people say, well, there's not a demon behind every rock. Actually, there probably is. But there's also an angel. I mean, you know, my pastor said it this way. He said, Jim, if you, because he had his eyes open a few times to see these things. He said, he said, if you could see how many demons and angels there were, and God will literally open your eyes to see the invisible world that we all say we believe in. He said, it would, it would probably drive you crazy. 
I think it's about right. All right. Uh, I'm almost done here. Sorry, I've already gone 20 minutes, 10 minutes longer than I wanted to go. Even though these is, oh, wait a minute. Clearly be in charge. Nature would dictate. Okay, let me move on. Uh, even though these divisions were all marching together, it also seemed the entire army was on the verge of chaos. For example, the demons of hatred hated each other, the other demons, as much as they hated the Christians, the ones they were riding on, and the ones that were not a part of that. The demons of jealousy were all jealous of each other. Okay? If you have an unrelenting issue, that is probably... You are probably under attack by a demonic entity. It doesn't mean you're possessed. It doesn't mean you're owned. Anybody can have that. You know, the enemy is an equal opportunity attacker. People say, well, you have to open a door. No, that's not true. That is, I absolutely reject that. I know people that they don't open a door, and yet they do get still get attacked. You may be the most peaceful person in the world and not open the door at all. And you, how do you think the person opens the door in the first place? Well, probably because they were attacked. Okay, let's just use our brains here. All right, but if you open a door, you absolutely then make it worse and so on and so on. All right, last paragraph right here. I noted that the demons were not riding, or excuse me, were riding on the Christians, but they were not in them, as was the case with the non-Christians. Okay, horde of hell, okay, massive army like you see in the movies, Christians and non-Christians, that's, that's the only way God sees people. He loves everybody, but mark it down, in the end, there's only sheep and goats. There's no gloats or sheep shoats or whatever. It's black and white, it says you're this, you're my party, you're not. He's, he, this is how he sees people, Jew, Gentile. He always sees you're either saved or you're not saved. That has nothing to do with love, okay? It just has to do with a spiritual spiritual condition. You're either born again or you're not, so on. So, he says there's two classes of people in the hordes of hell. If you're just joining us, please go back and listen to the beginning. These hordes of hell. So, there's two classes. There's the believer and the non-believer. Let me read it one more time about these two classes, okay? I noted that the demons... Now, this is in the army of sin. These are not talking about... Believers that are free and walking in freedom and so on. That's a different thing altogether. I noted that the demons were riding on these, excuse me, were riding on these Christians, but they were not in them, as was the case with non-Christians. It was obvious that these believers had only to stop agreeing with their demons in order to get free with them. First step, stop agreeing with it. This is why you hear me hammer this all the time. You cannot be free from something you agree with. You cannot be free from something that you just tell yourself is okay. You'll never be free from it. Never. If you walk in agreement then, and your agreement starts right up here and right in here and goes to this. Your mind, your spirit, your mouth, okay, keep saying, well, 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 well. And you, you actually go to the Bible and find excuses for it. You will be bound until the day you die. Until you break your agreement with that. See, God's committed to go with you all the way, all the way to the day you get delivered. If it takes a day, a year, a month, a lifetime, it doesn't matter. He is committed to go with you all the way, but not until you break your agreement. That's what repentance is. It is changing the mind. It is to repent. It is to go back to the highest way of thinking and say, I break my agreement with this. I am not this. I'm not a liar. I'm not a pervert. I'm not a, a thief. I'm not... Uh, a violent. I'm not a bitter. I'm not an angry. I, that's not who I am. I am made to be like Jesus. Period. The end. That's all. And if you agree with what God says and disagree with what the enemy says, that's the beginning point for your deliverance. Now there may be, there's probably other things you need to do, like seek out help, like read about it. Okay, like maybe fast and pray. These come out but not by fasting and praying. Not every demon is that. You know, in the hierarchy of the demonic, it's, there's, there's a hierarchy like there are with angels. The Bible talks about mighty angels, and then it talks about a, a small angel, a little angel. Okay, <laughs> there's, there's big ones, little ones, powerful, less powerful. Same way, in the, there are principalities in the enemy's kingdom. Little ones, you know, smaller, lesser, all of this. You should read this book. I'm telling you, it's really great. Okay, but you need to know some come out by fast only by fasting and prayer. So others, no. Okay, others are much simpler. All right, I'm trying to end here. They the demons were 
They were not in the Christians like there were the non-Christians they were riding on them. It was obvious that these believers had only to stop agreeing with the demon that's, that's coming against them, attached to them, whatever, riding on them, in order to get free from them. For example, if the Christian on whom a demon of jealousy was riding just started to question that jealousy, the demon would start to weaken very fast. When this happened, the weakened demon would cry out, listen to this, this is some insight to the invisible, would cry out to the, uh, cry out, and the leader of the division would direct the other demons around him to attack that Christian until the jealousy would build up its power and strength again. And if this did not work, if the, in other words, if the Christian kept disagreeing with that demonic thing, calling it what it was, okay, would begin if this uh, the demons would start quoting scriptures, perverting them in a way that would justify. Right now, I feel in my spirit. Right now, someone has done this. Not trying to shame you, trying to break the lie off of you. If they're in a gr disagreement, they they break their agreement with the enemy. Enemy starts to weaken. Enemy sends others seven to come. Says. Then the demons would start quoting scriptures to them to justify the bitterness, accusations, and other satanic influences that they were spreading. So the demon comes and says, yeah, but what about this scripture? And you wind up vocalizing it. You just made your agreement with the enemy again. Or posting it, yeah, well, you know, blah, blah, okay. Okay. Done. I encourage you to watch both the links. In the ver at the very least, watch the first one. You can take 20 minutes. You can do this. You can take 20 minutes and watch it. And have an open heart about it. Okay. The first thing the enemy has to do to keep you in bondage is to keep you believing a lie about your bondage. It's so simple. Okay. It doesn't mean there won't be a whole lot more to do after that. I don't know. Every case is different. But the first thing, I guarantee you, the thing that keeps you in bondage is him keeping you believing a lie. And Jesus, out of the words of Jesus, you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you, the truth will make you, because make it means process. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. If that's true, the opposite is true. It's the, if the truth makes you free, it's the lie that keeps you bound. So listen with an open heart. Ask the Lord to give you revelation. And then just begin to pray okay? and find someone who can pray with you. You know, go someplace where they believe in casting out demons. I mean, you'll, you're going to hear him talk about a process, and it's a good process. I've seen it work many times myself. All right, you guys, love you. Thank you so much for listening. Again, this went a little longer than I thought, but that's always what happens, right? Come on. Jim always says it's going to be short, and it never is. Love you guys. Please, if you can right now, as soon as we're done, listen to that first link where Isaiah Salvador comments on the link from Robert Morris. You'll be glad you did. And, um, and take heart. Take heart. Know that God wants you free more than you want to be free. But sometimes we don't see the process. Okay? You have to believe he's not just sitting back with his arms folded saying, you know, he's so ticked off at you. No. He wants you free more than you want you free. Amen? And he's made a way. It's not always easy. Okay, It's not supposed to be. If you could slip in and out of demon influence easily, you'd be more likely to do it. Okay, It's actually supposed to be kind of difficult because then once you get free, you hold on to your freedom. Does that make sense? All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Oh, looks like Christopher. God bless you guys. I love you all. And uh, I will not be able to be on tomorrow. Um, no explanation. I just won't be able to be so... It's Friday. I'll look forward to seeing you Monday morning. Lord willing, the creek don't rise. God bless you. Give yourself permission to have a great day. Bye-bye.